my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon for my sins and for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. We always pray at the start of these meditations, professing our faith in the fact that God is here. Important word. Maybe you're aware already that in the Holy Land, in the place that Jesus was made incarnate, the place that God entered human history in the womb of Our Lady, it's written on the ground, Hic verbum caro factum est. Normally, that phrase from St. John's Gospel is simply verbum caro factum est. The word was made flesh. But in the Holy Land, in that very place, the word hic is added. Here, here, the word was made flesh. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here. That's a profound statement of faith. And Jesus, we really mean it. We really mean that where we're sitting right now or kneeling or standing or out for a walk, I believe that you're here, yes, physically with me, I believe that, I believe that you're everywhere, but I believe that you're in the situation that I'm going through right now. And this is the maybe the reflection we can take from today's gospel. An interesting gospel for St. John, it's quite a short passage from St. John's gospel. It's the beginning or near the beginning of chapter 6 in John's gospel, so the bread of life discourse, the chapter in John that's all about Jesus' Eucharistic teaching. Jesus, you will say some amazing things to us in the days to come as we work through this sixth chapter. And on this, on this day, the passage we hear is simply about a boat ride from one side of the lake to the other on the, on the way to Capernaum. So the disciples get into a boat on the shore and they set out for Capernaum. It's already getting dark. We hear that and we hear the wind was strong, the seas were rough, and all of a sudden the disciples look and see Jesus walking towards them on the lake. This is such an amazing thing to imagine. Jesus walking towards us in the storm. I sometimes wonder what what would that have looked like. Stormy waves are not a flat sea. You know, you imagine seeing a very windy uh, when the tide is coming in. You know, when the when the waves are really crashing. I live by the seaside, and every now and then, when the wind is very high, I love to go down to the seashore and and watch the waves really crash, crash against the sea wall. There's something very exciting about a stormy sea, only though if you're standing on the land. Not so exciting if you're in the sea. And so imagine a rough water with stormy waves, wind all around. Where would you have been walking, Jesus? Maybe you would come in and out of focus, perhaps, as the waves went up and down. We don't know. We don't know. St. John only gives us the detail that you were walking on the lake. And St. John we, is not the only one. We hear the other gospel writers report a similar event where you walk across the stormy seas. And it's this boat ride that for me is, in my own prayer, just something I'd like to take you to you, Jesus, because I find that very often following you, being a disciple of yours, means time and again these kind of boat rides where we find ourselves journeying seemingly from one safe place to another safe place. You know, maybe maybe we're at a place in our lives and we think, I'd be quite happy to stay here, actually. You know, <laughs> this feels quite comfortable. 
my work's going well, things going well in my family, I've got some friends, thanks be to God, I've got enough money maybe, uh, I've got my health, um, I'm part of some clubs, you know, things, are, things are good right now. And all of a sudden something shifts. Maybe it's that one of those things that I assumed would be good forever changes and someone I know gets sick or maybe I get sick or I lose a job or something major or it might be something minor you know how often it can be that we just wake up one day and our mood is just down it's so hard to to fight it it's important to fight it. it's important to struggle but but it's hard you know something happens during the day um okay we can recognize maybe I was a bit oversensitive there but but it does have an effect on me it it affects my my spirit it seems to affect my peace it affects the way I want to speak to other people these things are significant in the spiritual life and they seem to happen again and again and again Jesus it's like being these disciples time and again journeying from one safe place to another because we know we know that when I wake up tomorrow my mood will probably be better after a good night's sleep or you know maybe that comment that was made to me won't hurt me so much or or I'll spend some time in prayer and and um, consider something in the presence of God and, and see it differently but it's it's a journey I had to go through these journeys are very important in the spiritual life and what I love about this gospel passage is that Jesus you're there throughout it you know the disciples realize it's getting dark and you still haven't come to them and so they set off without you in the boat how often is that true of me how often is that true of you i wonder as i'm praying with you my brother my sister do you ever get into some difficult moment of life without jesus do you ever set off in your boat without jesus i recognize that i do jesus i repent for that i repent that Sometimes that's the normal way I go about struggles. It's only when I'm in the middle of it I think, oh my goodness, I never prayed. I never asked for help in this situation. I just I just kind of went blindly into it. Or I felt like I was on my own the whole time. I didn't I didn't trust. I didn't trust that this was guided by your hand, these moments. Maybe there's something going on in your life right now as you pray with me. Perhaps we can make an act of faith together. Jesus, I believe that you're here, that you see me, that you hear me. In this storm, in this particular journey from shore to shore, this particular lake, and then you come towards me in the boat, and I have to say, Jesus, I'm frightened. It's frightening, it's a frightening experience. The disciples are frightened to see you, their beloved, walking on the stormy waters towards them. Why? Maybe because it's dark and this kind of ghostly figure. Maybe they don't realize it's Jesus straight away. Maybe that's what frightens them. And that's not what it says in the gospel, though. It says they saw Jesus walking towards them and were frightened. Jesus says, do not be frightened. It is I. It is I. Oh, Jesus, I profess my faith in you. Please walk with me. Please walk alongside me, who often feel like I'm going under the waves. Help me to believe that I'm going to get to that shore safely. St. Julian of Norwich, those famous words of hers, all will be well. All things will be well. All manner of things will be well in the Lord, she said. I don't know who this was who said this. Forgive me if, if you know and it's really obvious and I've just forgotten, but someone, <laughs> someone said, this too shall pass. Those words sometimes come back to me and are a great consolation. This too shall pass. This stormy river ride this time of seemingly endless 
mental, spiritual, emotional, physical suffering, it will pass. This too shall pass. But the challenge for the disciple is to see Jesus there in the midst of that struggle. I invite you into my boat right now, Lord. You're welcome. You're welcome to journey with me on these, these journeys that you invite me to make where we'd rather stay on one shore or the other. You say, but my holiness, my trust, my faith is going to be tried and tested, purified by going through those moments. So I give my heart to, to you, Mother Mary. You knew those stormy waters very well. And you know them in my life very well. And I ask your prayers. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.